Good evening, everyone, and happy uh, midweek to all of you. Nana Isali and myself are now inside the church. We are now live here at Vancouver Filipino SD Church. Welcome to our service this evening. <clears throat> we will continue to study our Bible, and we are now in the book of Chronicles. So if you have a Bible with you tonight, please uh, be ready and we are going to study the book of Chronicles, the message of Chronicles tonight. And as our custom, uh, we're going to ask the Lord again uh, to guide us in our study tonight. Let us bow our heads for our prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, this evening, O Lord, we would like to ask your guidance to be with us. Bless our worship this evening. Bless our service. And also bless our study. Help us to understand the message of Chronicles. Uh, so that we may be able to appreciate your goodness and your mercy toward each and every one of us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So when you look at your Bible, uh, you would notice that the book of Chronicles is divided into two, let's say, books, first and second, second Chronicles. And you would notice that if you're going to read uh, these books, first and second, second Chronicles, uh, you would notice that it talks about the life of David talks about the life of Solomon and later on you will find out that this book includes the fall of Judah as well. And uh, this is like a story of God's people. Now, number one lesson here that I'd like you to understand. Uh, when you read uh, First Chronicles chapter 1, up to chapter chapter 9, okay, uh, chapter 8, yes, chapter 9, you would notice that this is all about genealogy or ancestry of the nations of certain people, okay? We have genealogy uh, from Adam and then descendants of Abraham, and you would also notice... Uh, the 12 sons of Jacob, that is Israel, and chapter 2, verse 9, genealogy of David, and also chapter 3 talks about the family of David, and in chapter 4, it's about the tribes of Israel, line of Hur, Asher, and descendants of Simon, in verse 24, that's the beginning of that, and also, let us check the Bible, Genealogy from Reuben, from chapter 5. And genealogy of the uh, priestly line, chapter 6. And also genealogy from Ishakar, chapter 7. And verse 6 is also descendants of Benjamin. 13, sons of Naphtali, verse 14. Descendants of Manasseh, verse 20. Descendants of Ephraim, and so on and so forth. It's all about descendants in genealogy. And for us, uh, ordinary uh, readers of the Bible, uh, we don't want to, uh, let's say, spend time reading those names. <laughs> because most of the time, when we read uh, those names, we are not uh, familiar with most of those names. But the lesson of First Chronicles is that God is trying to say in First Chronicles or to reveal his faithfulness throughout generation, beginning from Adam up to the last man mentioned in the book of Chronicles. It is about God's 
faithfulness to all generation. His love never fails. His uh, mercy endures forever. That is the message of God. That's why uh, he said about this genealogy. And these long list names uh, that follows presence a history of God's work in the world from Adam through Zerubbabel. And some of these names remind us of stories of great faith and others of tragic failure. And most of the people named, however, we know nothing, but those who died and known to us are known by God. So God will also remember us when we die. And because of this long list of names, I want you to understand again that the message of God, why he mentioned these things, is that his unfailing faithfulness to all generations. When you look at your life, okay, um, 30 years ago, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years ago, you would see the guidance of God in your life. And that is not new for us because God had been in that business in the Old Testament until uh, our story mentioned that there is no cure for these people. I have stretched out my arm to help these people for these, for these people to understand my grace and my love, I gave them the law and the testimonies and all of these things, but they want to live on their own until there is no remedy for them. So God said, well, I have something for you. Because of your iniquity, I will let you uh, be under the yoke of the king of the Babylon and later on, uh, the king of the Medes and the Persian, but you will go out of that nation and serve me in this place. Now, uh, because of these uh, genealogies of God's uh, unfailing faithfulness to us, we can know God and trust him to keep his words. So like Israel, we should have no higher goal in life than devoted service to God. And you would notice here uh, that God is always uh, faithful to his people. Okay? He protects them in every generation and provides leaders to guide them. And because God has been at work throughout the centuries, his people can trust him to work in the present and you can rely on his uh, presence today now when you turn your bible to the book of first chronicles chapter let's say chapter 9 and then verse 1 you would notice this statement so israel all israel was enrolled by gen genealogies and behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. And Judah was carried away into exile to Babylon for their unfaithfulness. Even though that God is faithful, but his people is not faithful. And there is a theory that this uh, book of First and Second Chronicles were written after the exile from Babylon. And because of this, you would notice if you're going to read Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel, uh, they deserve this because of their sin. Now, that's chapter 9, verse 1. If you're going to turn your Bible to Second Chronicles, so let's turn our Bible to Second Chronicles. 
chapter 36, right? Chapter 36, verse 15, beginning from verse 15. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them again and again by his messengers because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they continually mock the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of God or the wrath of the Lord arose against his people until there was no remedy. The only remedy that mentioned in the book of prophets, and you can read the book of uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, that the only remedy of God is to put his people in the midst of affliction in Babylon, to refine them, to mold them. And you would see here, why did God send messengers and prophets? Because he had compassion on his people. So when we hear something or preaching from the word of God or warning from the word of God or encouragement from your uh, fellow believers, or from your elders, or a pastor, or some other preachers that you want to see in television, or maybe from 3ABN, or Amazing Facts, or it is written, it is because God has compassion on you. God loves you. God cares for you. And he doesn't want you to live in sinning or live a life apart from him. He wants you to be near him and be with him in order for you to experience his goodness and mercy in this life. That's what he did to his people in the story of First and Second Chronicles. But because of their sin, Judah was carried away into exile. And because of their unfaithfulness. But remember that God is faithful. That is the reality. Now in order for us to understand why 1 Chronicles mentioned uh, chapter 9 verse 1. That they were carried into exile because of, of their unfaithfulness. I will give you a glimpse of what they have done to the Lord. So let's take a look at the book of Jeremiah. And... You will see in the book of Jeremiah a very interesting uh, truth that we need to understand. Uh, okay, before Jeremiah, let's turn to Isaiah first, okay? Isaiah. You would notice here in the book of Isaiah... Look at chapter 1 of your Bible and verse 3. An, an ox knows its owner and a donkey its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. And then verse 4. Alas, sinful nation, sons who act corruptly, they have abandoned the Lord. Verse 5 and 6. Where will you be stricken again as you continue in your rebellion? The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is nothing sound in it. Only bruises, welts, and raw wounds, not, not pressed out or bandaged, nor softened with oil. Meaning the whole body, okay? This is what we call total depravity. In Adventist term, when we say total depravity, it means uh, the whole person is affected or infected 
by sinfulness or by sin. There is no part of the, of the body that is uh, not affected by it. Right? So, from the whole head is sick, the whole head is sick, the whole heart is faint, from the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no, there is nothing sound in it. And these people, they love to appease God by their what? By their sacrifices, by their offerings. As if God would change his mind by offering these sacrificial animals. And that's why he said, when you look at verse 11, What are your multiplied sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of bronze and the fat of feed cattle, and I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls, lambs, or goats. Even your new moon and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, verse 14, moon festivals and your appointed feast, they have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. Because according to verse 15, the last part, your hands are covered with blood. The most important thing to God is in verse 16. Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Cease to do evil. And I can read and read and read from the book of, Jer uh, of Isaiah just for us to understand what they have been doing during the time. Now, let's jump to the book of Jeremiah. The same thing, right? The same thing. This God in the book of Jeremiah is also the husband, right? God is their husband, and God is called the father in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, let us see. Let's take a look first. Where can we find that verse? Here in the book of Jeremiah chapter 31. Okay? Yeah. 31 verse 7. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, okay, and shout among the chief of the nations, proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people. Until verse 8, until verse 9, and then he said in verse 9, With weeping they will come, and by supplication I will lead them. I will make them walk by streams of waters on a straight path in which they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Okay? So this Lord is the father to Israel. But this, the same Lord, is also the husband. Chapter 31 and the verse is 32. Let us read. I'm reading from New American Standard Bible. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. So the Lord, the God, is the father and also the husband. And when you look at the sentence here, this is the same Lord that uh, took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Okay? Now, that, let's sidetrack a little bit. Turn our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy. And this same God is the God in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Look at verse 6. 32 of Deuteronomy verse 6. Do you thus repay the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is not he your father who has bought you? He has made you and established you. Is the father. Okay? Now, chapter 32 and the verse is 18. You neglected the rock who begot you and forgot the, and forgot the God who gave you birth. That's why this God is called the Father, right? Yeah. But he is also the husband. 
Now let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Uh, here. The sin or the unfaithfulness of God's people. He is the Father. Look at chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Okay? This is the calling of Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah. And then God said in verse 7, But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. If you're going to read the ministry of Jeremiah, his message is against uh, Judah's leader, against the king, against the priest, against the rulers of his people. But why he endured? He understood the purpose of God for him. And this is the key for leadership or being a servant leader. Uh, this idea of leadership or teaching of leadership or being a servant leader in the Bible is rooted in the revelation of God's will to his people. So if we know our purpose and we really understand the purpose of God for us, then we focus on that purpose no matter what. Focus on that plan of God no matter what. And God said to Jeremiah, the verse 9, the last part, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Look at verse 16. I will pronounce judgment or my judgment on them concerning all their wickedness, whereby they have forsaken me and have offered sacrifices to other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. So number one is idolatry. Okay? We're involved. Verse 8, chapter 2 of Jeremiah, verse 8. The priest... And those who handle the law, the rulers, the prophets, they were all involved in this issue. Now, uh, look at chapter 2, verse 19. Your own wickedness will correct you and your apostasies will reprove you. Okay? Meaning, uh, God will allow the Babylonian uh, to overpower them and to be under the slavery of the Babylonian as captive in order for God to refine them, in order for them to understand their sin and their unfaithfulness. Look at verse 20. For long ago, I broke your yoke and tore up your bonds but you said, I will not serve, for in every high hill and then under every uh, green tree you have lain down as a harlot. And then verse 28, look at the last part. Oh, let's, let's read uh, 28. But where are your gods which you made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you in the time of your trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods. 32, can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me. So uh, they are unfaithful to God. There are so many things here in the book of uh, Jeremiah. Okay? Chapter 5, verse 15. Behold, I am bringing a nation against you from afar. O house of Israel uh, declares the Lord. Okay? So, <laughs> God already said uh, these things to them. Chapter 6, verse 22, that says, The Lord, behold, a people is coming from the north land, and a great nation will be aroused from the remotest parts of the earth. Okay? 
So if you have time, you read the entire book of Jeremiah and you will understand uh, their sins. They broke the Sabbath. They don't want to keep the Sabbath. Okay. And in the book of Isaiah, they love to drink uh, wine, strong drink. They worship idols. They broke the Sabbath. Oh, let's see. Uh, where can we find it? Chapter 17 of Jeremiah. When you look at chapter 17, beginning from verse 19 up to 27, you will see that they decided not to keep the Sabbath. But God said in verse 27, If you do not listen to me to keep my Sabbath, or the Sabbath day holy, by not carrying a load and coming in through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates, and it will devour the palaces of Jerusalem and not be quenched. So, these are the sins of these people, and these are the same sins that people are doing today, that the people are practicing today. But we, as a church, we fully understood or understand the faithfulness of God because it has been revealed in the book of Chronicles since from Adam up to the kingdom of David up to the kingdom of his son, Solomon, up to the greatest kingdom of the Messiah. God will fulfill his faithfulness to his people. Right? So let us take a look of these things. Okay, let me check. Because I think the Holy Spirit is prompting me to look at that, uh, the, the promise of God to David. Uh, let me check first, okay? Because I just read this uh, last week. If I can still remember, I think in the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter, uh, let's say, 89. Look at, look at your Bible. Psalm 89. 89 verse 3, I have made a covenant with my chosen, and I have sworn to David, my servant, and I will establish your seed forever and build up your throne to all generations. Okay, for me, this is a messianic statement of God. This is the covenant that he made to his servant, David. I preached, I, I mentioned in my preaching that Israel is also called my servant. Israel is called my firstborn, my son. David is also called my servant, my firstborn, because there is a messianic theme in that statement. Okay? Jesus Christ questioned the scribes and the Pharisees in the New Testament if David called him Lord, how come he is his son? He was talking about the Messiah. Now, 89 verses 3 and 4. Okay? Let's go to verse 20. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Okay? Sidetrack a little bit. When you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, But of the Son, he says, your throne of God is forever and ever. Okay? That is in the book of Hebrews. Uh, so let's go back to the book of Hebrews a little bit. Just for a while. Because I want you to understand this. Hebrews 1 verse 8. But of the Son, he says, your throne of God is forever and ever. The Son is addressed as God. But in verse 9... This is messianic statement in the line of David. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. Okay? Let me check. 
that statement. 45. Okay, you can also check that in Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. This is a song of love, okay? <clears throat> now, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. And when you look at Psalm 89, Again, this is a messianic statement. David was anointed, okay? The servant. Because in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is also called the servant. He is also called the son of God. Now, verse 20. I have found David my servant in Psalm 89, verse 20. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. And then verse 26 and 27. He will cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I also shall make him my firstborn. Can you imagine? This is a statement of God. Okay? So, why did I mention that? Because God's faithfulness is not only during the time of uh, the Old Testament, but beyond the Old Testament. It goes to the time of the New Testament until the coming of Jesus Christ. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. And God will fulfill his covenant with David. Okay? I will establish your seed, not seeds, but your seed forever. And if you want to know about, about, uh, about these things... Uh, Look at the foundation of this uh, Messianic kingdom. Verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. So when you read, okay, the book of Chronicles, during the time of David, right? He realized that God's faithfulness is throughout all generation. For me, this is now the application. This book gives me hope. That when you read the book of Chronicles, yes, uh, David uh, is not really perfect. You know, because he did a tremendous thing in the sight of God. Solomon is not even uh, perfect because he sinned against God. But his faithfulness is everlasting. So I should say, from everlasting to everlasting. Second, even though we commit some mistakes or have committed sins just like these people, uh, David and Solomon, right? As long as you are aware of your sin and you want to understand the purpose of God for you, God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. He will allow uh, distractions like what happened to these uh, kings. He will allow persecutions, like what happened to these people. He will allow uh, danger in order for us to uh, understand and realize that we are not in control of our life. God is in control of our life. And because God's unfaithfulness is real, and from everlasting to everlasting, he will use those, let's say, uh, an easiness of life, those problems of life, those uh, uneasiness, problems, 
of life. For us to understand that God is correcting us from our mistakes. God is helping us to understand that all these things is not is just, is just like temporary. And his purpose and his grace is everlasting. So God wanted me and you to focus on him. Focus on his on his faithfulness. Now you would also see in uh, Chronicles about uh, temple and about the priest and the message of God for them is this. Okay? Uh, worship is the center of our life. Worship is the center of our faith. When you see First Chronicles, after you read First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, and Jeremiah and Isaiah and Ezekiel, you would understand that when God's people are focused on His plan, they are also active in worship. Once they rejected God, they, are, they were not also active in worship. And you would see this in your own life. If your focus is not God, you are not active in worship. But if your focus is none other than God, you are active in church worship. So, because of this, God is always faithful to His people. I like the statement of Paul to Timothy. Uh, if you are unfaithful, He will remain faithful. But if you disown him, he will disown you. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be faithful until the end. God is our life and without him, we are nothing. We are nothing. So my dear brothers and sisters, I hope that the message of Chronicles now uh, gave you uh, after we let's say pick on some important things here uh, I hope that this uh, book uh, gives you now an idea that God is always faithful yes. to his people I say pastor you know what sometimes I I, I have this feeling that I am not in the mood of going to church. Let me tell you this, my brother, my sister. Don't base our relationship with God with our mood or emotion. Let us base our understanding and worship of God based on the revealed, revealed word of God for us. If we can practice that, then I am sure that we are all going to be a mature Christian. That every time, even though there's no elder, even though there's no pastor, the church is still mature in spiritual things because your life is focused on God. May God bless us all tonight. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, our beloved, gracious Heavenly Father, we call you Father because we are your sons and daughters. Thank you, O Lord, for this wonderful message in the book of Chronicles that you are always faithful to us, 
you are faithful to your covenant people and you are faithful to us today. Even though our records are not good, but the records of Jesus Christ as our substitute is enough for us to approach you this evening. And in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, And the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, I pray for those people who are sick. Please, Heavenly Father, just like in our lesson, forgive them so that they would experience healing from physical and spiritual sickness. Thank you, Heavenly Father. That every day of our lives you are present. That you are willing to guide us and teach us. That you are willing to share your love to each and every one of us. Help us to see those things, Heavenly Father. And count them as, our, as, as, as your blessings to us. Tonight, O oh Lord, I ask to bless I ask you to bless us tonight as we leave this place and bless also those people who will be watching this message. I ask this in the loving name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Happy midweek everyone and may God bless you all. Keep safe. God bless.